Kittle was Kittle. Captain showed up. My number one takeaway after the loss last week was where the hell are the captains? You know, you had offensive play where Kyle, you, the defining play I already talked about where Buda Baker came and blew him up. George Kittle, Trent Williams, and Kyle Juszczyk had three missed assignments and three loafs on the Mason fumble that ruined the game last week. That was on offense. Then you had Fred Warner with a loaf and missed assignment on the two-point conversion as well. And so you had all these captains just not showing up. Well, if we look at our captains and kind of what they did this game, good Lord, okay? <laughs> Brock Purdy, 3-0, and didn't turn the ball over. Incredible, right? Kyle Juszczyk. When Kyle was out there, great things happened. Got the touchdown at the end. You know, that was really, really cool. Debo Samuel, three catches, 102 yards. Freaking unbelievable. George Kittle, two touchdowns, five catches, 58 targets on six. Uh, sorry, 58 yards on six targets. Great. Trent Williams played his freaking rear end off. Go to the defensive side. I, I mean, look at what, you know, Fred Warner did. 11 tackles, one pass break. Was all over the place. Nick Bosa might have had the best game of his career, and he didn't even get a sack. Like, people showed up doing what they were supposed to do. Now, let's talk grades. Let's go offense first. Dominique Pooney, the rookie baby, the number one highest graded player. He had an 87.8 grade, but my favorite thing about it, a 90.3 run blocking grade for Dominique Pooney. And our whole entire offensive line for years now has been Trent Williams and the Misfits, right? That's what it's been. It's not that anymore. It is not that anymore. You now have or seem to have two stalwarts, two of them. Trent Williams, Hall of Famer, absolutely incredible. And now Dominic Pooney, who has continued to play. He's playing Pro Bowl level football. He really, really is. Now, here's Trent. Let's go back to Trent. Uh, just talking about how good Dominic Pooney's been. That's amazing. I, I didn't know he didn't play right guard in college, so I just learned something. Yeah, that, which is crazy because, I mean, he literally has the makings of a Pro Bowl uh, pro player at that position. So, um, but he, he's, like I said, he's a godsend, man. He's a, um, you know, really, really good kid. Um, really, really professional. Um, he gained he gained his teammates respect just by the way he carried himself. It's incredible what he's done. I mean, just from you know, if we're just looking from an analytics standpoint, right? PFF, we we kind of always have to go back to them because they do such a good job. Because the snap by snap by snap breakdown that they do, they don't miss a snap. Every single play is graded. He's the eighth highest rated guard in the NFL. Top ten. Every team starts two, 32 teams. There are 64 starting guards in the NFL. He's eighth. Eighth. Dude's playing like a freaking back end, first round pick, early second round pick. Absolute stud. And again, the theme this whole time, this whole game has to be rookies are amazing. Rookie draft class, awesome. Everybody hitting. Everybody hitting. Now, uh, Dominic Pooney won. Jordan Mason, too, continues to be amazing. Only played 18 snaps. The shoulder issue was a major, you know, okay, he, was, he was running the ball very, very well. You, you look, he had an 86.6 grade. You look at the stat line, dude had nine carries for 73 yards. I mean, <laughs> he was averaging 8.1 yards per carry. You know, saw the injury happen in the second quarter. And he's on the sideline. He's got his helmet on. And I was just watching 24. Like, is he going back in? Is he going back in? Because we said, without Jordan Mason, you're in trouble. Isaac Garindo has been awful, terrible, terrible. But even Isaac Garindo stepped in and made one of the best plays. Now, if we look at where he ranks, Isaac Garindo got a 63 grade. He was not good. <laughs> we'll, we'll go through it with the film. But, man, he had that one huge home run play, and that was just everything. So, like, it was at that point where it's like, gosh, they got three timeouts. If we don't get a first down, they're going to get the ball back with good field position, time on the clock to go ahead and win. 
And so let's go to Debo. I, I thought this was probably one of Debo's best press conferences. Uh, shout out to the great Juan Salas for getting these clips up. And Eric Meisner, our IG guy that helps with everything. You had the trips. Gosh, uh, shout out to this team. This team is incredible. Thank you, 49ers Rush team. Uh, but here's Debo talking about Garendo and that huge run. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know why he didn't score. I would have scored. Uh, <laughs> he said he was looking at the sideline and people was telling him to go down for what I don't know. Why he's looking at the sideline running anyway. But, uh, man, that's just huge. Um, it's kind of like next man up mentality. Um, you know, we always want money out there, but uh, Renato went out there and um, took advantage of the opportunity yet. Yeah, that, I mean, that's huge. Huge opportunity. Probably should have scored, but, like, it was one of those plays that wasn't – he didn't hurt the team by sliding. Should have scored. And Chad had even said, like, here, I'll play the clip just so so we have it here. Let me find the right one. Um, oh, no. I should have it. Um, yeah, here's the Garendo sh Shetty had talking about what Isaac should have done. You always feel like guys are close. I mean, we were running the ball pretty well all day. Um, you know, when they're going to really commit to stopping the run and try to get in those eight man fronts, uh, we got a good bounce read where we got outside. And um, usually when there's not two safeties there, which I don't think there were, uh, you break them. And he's got the speed to do it. And it's he said he's a hair, an eyelash slower than Raheem. Um, and they had a pretty fast guy chasing him. Um, but he said he was. He wanted to give that to Juice, so it ended up working out well. Got to run more time off the clock. Hell no, we want him to score, <laughs> and I don't think he slid. And that's what he's claiming. Um, I think he got. I think twenty one's a fast player, and he got him a little bit there at the end. I think. I mean, I'll see it. You guys saw it, um, but it ended up working out better for us. Yeah, my favorite thing is that he stayed in bounds. That was huge. So whether he's he slid. I don't think he did, uh, but he should have scored. Uh, he thought nobody's going to catch him, but it's the NFL. Shout out to 21. That dude's a baller. Um, it's going to be fun playing against him. You know, it, one of the cool things, like I love Buda Baker, and I love playing against him. Uh, it sucks that he made, you know, the game-winning play against us, against George Kittle. Like I love that George kittle Buda Baker matchup. Uh, Buda Baker freaking knocked George Kittle in the mouth and won the game for them. Uh, on that last play against us. But, like, I love best on best. And 21 Devin Witherspoon, like, dude, we're going to be playing against that guy for a long time. And I love it. Yeah, I want to I walk away with the division all the time. But best on best is huge. Now, sticking with the best of the 49ers, Jordan Mason second, George Kittle third. Good gosh. 80.6. Um, played 57 of 65 snaps. Was just awesome. Two mate, you know, two touchdowns. Great, great, great. Debo number four. Brock Purdy five. Brock Purdy was. Whew. Brock Purdy is so freaking good when he is protected. When he's protected, three touchdowns. Didn't turn the ball over. Here's Big Trent just on how good Brock Purdy's been. I'm in, I'm engaged. I think I seen Debo's. Um, you know, because the DN I was supposed to be blocking was chasing him in coverage, so. I had a pretty good vantage point on that. Um, you know, I was kind of nervous. I know 53 can run, but you know, obviously Debo got the full stride and it was game over. So, but yeah, um, you know, Brock. As long as we keep him up right, as long as we keep the pocket clean, I mean, he's going to make the right decisions. He's going to put us in good position. So, um, you know, we're not surprised by that. If Brock is upright, good things will happen, and they never got too close to him really at all this entire game you know you look at here let me scroll down to the defensive stats for the Seattle Seahawks they had four quarterback hits zero sacks zero sacks so you weren't getting those major negative plays that have been showing up I, I think that's that's huge you don't turn the ball over you protect the ball you run the ball sustain all those things that's where good things happen now Let's go back. George Kittle. This is this is what he said after the loss last week. Very simple. What do you got to do to get things right, George Kittle? So, I mean, I think all we have to do is hold on to the football, run the ball really well, and we're going to be okay. It's so simple. No turnovers for the 49ers. You run the ball 33 times for 228 yards, 6.9 yards per carry. With no turnovers? Yeah, you win that game. Now, I can't believe you only won the game by 12. Again, you look at these stats. You had 483 yards offense. Three turnovers forced. One on special teams, two interceptions. We'll talk about those. And you only won by 12. 
You only won by 12. Big reason why that is, and, you know, you see it here. Appreciate everybody right here. Josh, our special teams continue to let teams hang around because they're just so poorly coached every single freaking time. Oh, look at this. Alejandro, appreciate you, man. He says, you guys got to go to John's tailgate. Uh, we got four fire emojis and the F word in there. I freaking love it. Thank you. Uh, my favorite thing is at our parties is just building community, awesome relationships. I never get to spend as much time with everybody. You know, so many moving parts, making sure everybody's happy, which is hard to do when you got 200 plus people in a city that you're not in and what, you know, that you don't live in set up. But uh, we're getting better. We're improving the process. And if you ever leave one of our events and you're not happy, please talk to me. We will make it right however way we can. Uh, <laughs> we will always make it right. So if for some reason things ain't right, just reach out. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. Um, but if you want to look sharp, look at this stuff, man. Um, the 49ers Rush Road Trip team put together a freaking awesome site, um, and they are just representing 49ers bling. So if you want one of those, like, badass Debo chain helmets and stuff, they got them set up for you. All you do is go to sfgoldrushgear.com, sfgoldrushgear.com. Use promo code Road Rush. one word, all capitals, R-O-A-D-R-U-S-H. Man, I'm dyslexic. That's the hardest thing in the world to do. Uh, spell that out. You get 20% off. And so it'll ship straight to you. Uh, they got all kinds of stuff that's just incredible. Go check out the site. Support the channel. And support awesome people that are, you know, people don't understand how much it costs to throw these shit digs and to travel and to get, you know, eight-plus people's flights. and Like, it's just it's expensive. And so we're always trying to find ways to – offset costs and whatever else and uh, all those things. This is one of those ways. Um, I'm not in charge of any of that. It's just the team came together and built this awesome site. It's incredible. They have so much inventory. So go check that out. Uh, always want to support them. The 49ers Rush Podcast.